Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason Carr. You're watching Old Car Auto Guy, and this is my lifted 2009 Kia Sportage we call Bubbles. On this episode, if it wasn't for bad luck, we'd have none at all. Stay tuned. <laughs> So we are going to do a couple little updates on Project Bubbles here and one of them is we're still rubbing. So we've got to get it in the shop and figure out where exactly it's rubbing and do some more trimming. And as you can see back here my little patch job leaves much to be desired. I did end up taking the maul to it and pounding it in just a little bit to make room for those rear tires but most of the rubbing noise is coming from the front. So I am trying to find out what my next course of action is with this vehicle. Now, previously I had mentioned that I was going to do a paint job and I'm not so sure I want to do that now. And the reason for that is, is because basically I'm thinking that I may want to put some sort of a decal on the vehicle large enough that would attract people to look at it and read it uh, that says old car auto guy relating people or directing them back to the channel. Granted, this is only good locally, but any type of subscriber base is a great subscriber base. You guys are awesome. So if you guys think that I should paint it or decal it, leave your comments in the comment section below and let me know what you think I should do. Granted, keep in mind, I've only got about $200 left in my budget to get this done. Now, as I made reference to a bad luck and not having any good luck at all, we come back to the Jeep Compass. Now this is the Jeep Compass we had to put the transmission in. So I will recap the story behind the transmission in this. We took the vehicle on trade knowing the transmission was bad. So we ordered a transmission. The first one came in, it was the wrong style. We ordered a second one. We ripped out the old one, put the new one in the replacement and well, she's got a noise. <laughs> So yes, it does have a noise and dad seems to think that the torque converter is bad, the one that came with it. And uh, when the torque converter goes bad, it generally will break apart on the inside and send all kinds of crap running through the transmission. So when I called the place where we got it, they suggested replacing the torque converter. We said, no, I don't think so. The reason for that is, is because if we have to take the transmission out a second time, we want it to be the last time not take it out, put the torque converter in, put it all back together and find that the filings or the shavings that come out of the torque converter ended up ruining the transmission. So I asked them very politely to send us a whole new unit so that we only had to do this one more time. So they agreed to do that, but at the end of the day, the transmission still has to come out again. It wasn't a fun job the first time, granted now we have I shouldn't say we, not me. Tim has a little bit more experience at it and knows uh, how to get through there maybe a little bit quicker this time. So here's hoping it doesn't take as long as the first time and that it works. And as we come into the shop, you'll see the shop truck is up in the air. The front bumper is not where it's supposed to be. It is sitting here. Why you ask? Well, these are the new plow push plates or brackets for the Fisher plow. They have to mount on the front part of the frame here, so the rear, the front bumper had to be taken off in order to get to it. Once we get those on, we will be able to take the plow and get it all wired up. Apparently that's my job with this box of wires. It may look a little more intimidating than it is. Everything pretty much is just plug and play. The only thing you have to do to run wires is hook up the solenoid directly to the battery. Everything else is done through the control box. So that'll be a video for another time. We'll get that hooked up and get the plow running properly just in time for some poopy weather. So let's get bubbles back in here and on the hoist in the middle and we'll see if we can get that clearancing issue fixed up. All right, so we're back at the shop after supper on the same day and we are getting ready to pull the front wheels off of bubbles and remove the inner fender liners on both sides because they're well they're just rubbing too bad creating too much problem so 
While we're in there, we are going to fix the hole in the windshield washer reservoir, which I have no idea how it got there. And we'll see what we can do about a little bit more clearancing issues. So let's get to it. So while we're in here, we will clean out some of the grass from our little escapades from the last video, which are all bound up within the brakes here. Oh, what's this here? Where did that come from? We do see some remnants of rubbing. The paint is cleaned off nice and shiny right there, as well as over here. So I think what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be clearancing this area here a little bit, quite possibly with the big persuader. But up here, you can see a little shiny edge right there, and this is broken now, where the wheel is actually catching this whole thing. So I think what we're gonna do uh, in the uh, interest of simplicity is we're just gonna cut that little spot right out and uh, be done with it. Now, there is this air box right here, which is just part of the air intake system. And I don't wanna cut into that in case it's part of the vacuum. So I gotta be very careful when I'm cutting up along here. You know, that stuff doesn't start leaking out of it. Well, that spits a lot of black junk all over the place. Probably right in my beard, too. Yeah, maybe we will. It's a lot of swinging. Well, let's move over to the other side and see if we can cause more damage over there. Man, I'm out of shape. This side's not so bad. It is cleaned off a little bit right there and not so much right there. So we're not gonna have to clearance as much on the passenger side. But one thing I did notice is the frame is shiny right here, which tells me the, the tire when it turns to the left is rubbing up against that. On the other side, we didn't get that. But we are still going to clearance out this inner fender a little bit. See what we can do over here for damage now. Whew. I am so out of shape. Okay, so we've got those fenders pounded in on the inside there. Uh, we got some more plastic trimmed up. I'm now going to just see if we can seal up the windshield washer reservoir so it will hold maybe a gallon or at least half a gallon of fluid now. And uh, Get the tires back on it. We'll go for a drive and see how it uh, handles. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to spray it down with some brake cleaner to get it clean. And find myself a semi-clean rag to wipe it down with. So no shop is complete without some shoe goo. So we're going to put a little dab of shoe goo in there to fill the hole. And then we got some duct tape to seal her up. Mint. All right, so let's get this thing down, try it out. So I think the clearancing is good. We're not gonna know until we get outside and drive around the lot. But in the meantime, when I put this thing up in the air, I may have accidentally nicked a side of the exhaust with one of the arms on the lift. Might have to live with that. So here comes the test. So it's in there. We are going to have to clearance that with this guy. That just might be it. Let's go try this again. just ever so slightly, but I can turn a little bit further too. I 
I think I can live with that. So guys, that is all we have for this episode and uh, we're gonna have some more bubbles action coming at you very, very soon. And I also want to give you a little bit of a teaser. And that teaser is, there is something huge coming to Old Car Auto Guy. And when I say something huge, I'm talking, no, I, don't, I can't even give you any more information. Each episode, as we get closer to the reveal, of this big whatever it is I'm gonna be dropping some hints on what is taking place so guys you need to be sure you are watching each and every episode from here on out so that you can be a part of the action guys thanks for tuning in thank you for giving me all the big thumbs up and the great comments down below also don't forget if you haven't already hit that subscribe button because you're not gonna to want to miss out on all the fun also, the bell notification notifies you when I upload a new video. Guys, keep focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. We will see you in the next upload.